Jeez, what a crappy day it is today. Windy, not much sun. Probably better off staying inside. I'm talking about why I become a worm farmer. What do you reckon? Let's head in the kitchen and we'll film from there. Hey, g'day my friends. You wanna hear the story? Well, Basically, it was a bit over 25 years ago, bad motorcycle accident on my way to work. I was caretaking a property, growing food for this famous restaurateur called Steve Snow from Finns. If you know him up in the border of Queensland and New South Wales, check out his restaurant. Absolutely killer. Now, I stumbled across castings because I was trying to find a way to get this garden up and rolling. I had nothing to do. I was walking around on crutches. Fractured high femur, pin and plates in my leg, feeling pretty sorry for myself. So I thought, oh, I'd grow some food and got an opportunity to get some worm castings. Couldn't find anything else. Added to these crappy barren soils. And all of a sudden, I couldn't believe how well the plants were growing. Around about 20% was mixed through. And I started building this permaculture garden and it was really, really loving it. And then I started actually like getting the bus to college because I couldn't ride. So I actually enrolled into agribusiness so full-time and was studying at the college and I chose organics and a few different things as my majors so at organics horticulture Australian native foods were my three majors and at, then I ended up doing avocado management uh, as well now they didn't teach worm farming in the organics which was absolutely surprising you know what and they still don't teach it to this day I don't know many people that really do other here than in YouTube and as far as I know I've got the only course available online um, inside my channel here in the level three worm wranglers which teaches people how to home well farm worms at home right and over time I just saw the benefits and the benefits and I thought you know what People need to know more about this amazing creature. So I noticed that when you sort of grew, like I ended up growing like in a small space later on down the line after sort of, you know, we're going 10, 12 years forward after coming back from Thailand and, and working over there and Karen was born there. And I started small space gardening and started this channel and then I learned about worm farming because I went, I saw this guy had a worm farm and he was selling castings. And I thought these would be really great for my pot plants to grow on the veranda here for the potted vegetable garden. That's what I had in those days, the website. And we're sort of running traffic to and from YouTube to there. And it was pretty popular. I ended up selling it uh, for you know, enough to buy a car at that time. So that moved on and um, yeah, a really great story. And I just learned more and more about worm farming. Karen was a tiny little girl. We had this little space. I could make my own fertilizers on the veranda. I needed to save money. I didn't have much money. And you know, it was just me and her sort of living together. And I was about to grow all this amazing food on my veranda and it blew me out. I had tomatoes, all these different Asian greens chilies, leafy greens, lettuces, oh man, it was just endless. I just had so much stuff growing on there and I thought I've got to start teaching people this. And so I got more and more into worm farming and then slowly I thought, hey, I'm going to move into sort of micro greens and micro farming. I think this is the way, this is the new trend of the future, urban farming and started my own little urban farm, started worm farming more in a larger scale and using that compost to grow my plants to then sell food back to the restaurants, such as microgreens, different herbs, different lettuces and things. So I'd make up blends and bring them into the restaurants and sell them. I already had a name for growing food for restaurants before that because I'd been doing that off and on for many years. So a lot of people knew that my quality product was good. So I set up really fast. And then unfortunately, I got ill with dystonia. I had another business going, a cleaning business as well. I had a couple of staff working for me and an SEO business, a search engine marketing. We were actually like had a couple of staff and we were running different um, programs and things for clients and getting ranked in the Google and stuff. So I just overdid it. I was just overworked. 
and I was trying to make all this money back that I'd lost and just chasing, chasing, chasing. And again, then later on when I moved down the coast, I thought, because I had to stop because I was too sick, how do I sort of start again? I thought, I'm just going to start surfing and, you know, I'll start making some compost to get the garden going again. And I was making lots and lots of compost up the side of the house. And I thought, you know what, I could probably sell this. This is pretty good stuff. And, you know, then I just started scaling up again on the worm farming and found that by putting the worms through the compost like I was when I was growing the food for the restaurants, I didn't have to go that extra step. I didn't have to then make the compost and then grow the food and then sell the plants or sell the food. I was basically just going, hey, I'm just going to sell the compost. You know, I don't have to worry about it, uh, all the plants breaking down and all these problems with, you know, keeping leafy greens and putting things in the fridges, and all that, which I used to have to do and do deliveries and all that. I'm just going to sell the compost here and let people come to me. And I'm going to make a really good product that no one else has got. And see, word of mouth spread. It just went absolutely crazy. And I thought, well, I'm just going to keep breeding more worms now and put them through the system, grow more plants with it and, you know, share my knowledge online to help people that want to have worms at home so they can learn how to grow these amazing plants and have, not have to go out and buy all these synthesized chemical fertilizers and things and get more sustainable, you know, for the greener environment, save money, you know, and also I found the benefits were that you could actually grow plants that were less susceptible to pests and disease because they were just so healthy and the cell wall in those plants was just so strong and the sap flow was just absolutely amazing flowers texture taste to me was all better you know and i just you know i just had to start teaching it more and more and so that's why i started moving into in the last few years more about worm farming on this channel because you know they talk about in organics don't feed the plants feed the soil and when you're farming worms and microbiology that's what you're doing you're feeding the soil to grow amazing plants. So keep that in mind, guys. Feed the soil, not your plants. And that day, happy gardening. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you at the next video real soon. I'll get the comment down below before you go. Oh, flexi hand, this one or this one? I can't reach the camera from here though, but we'll go. Couldn't reach. There's a gentle breeze All the birds are making homes Inside the evergreens The air is clear With our loved ones close